I've never seen anything like it before, and to attempt to hit the ball out of there is pure madness. The winner of the gold medal and the champion golfer of the year is Cameron Smith. This is the one that I've always wanted to win since I was a little kid. So it just feels pretty amazing to be able to get it done today. Uh, it's amazing that it's my destiny to be the first Aussie to win. Just incredible. Hello and welcome to another Major Championship special episode of Playing From The Tips, the preview and tipping show of Golf Australia magazine, where we take you in-depth into all the professional golf happening around the world and offer up our best guesses as to the winners. Jimmy Emanuel here, leading the so-called experts on our 123rd US Open expedition for episode 18, where we'll also touch on the Women's Amateur Championship and the LPGA Tours Major LPGA Classic for Simply Give. Joining me this week are two mainstays of the preview and tipping game, first being golf's somehow preeminent tipster, mm-hmm. who is on his way to becoming more well-known for picking winners than picking odd parts of golf like paths to direct his attention to, a man who's also furious at the temperature of his coffee this morning. Mm. <laughs> Adrian Logue, bits happened in the world of golf since last week. Opinions, thoughts, Adam Hadwin tackle views. <laughs> so I was just making it seconds, would you? It wasn't a fantastic Canadian Open. I think we were concerned about the Canadian Open in this podcast last week when we were discussing it. And Shane Lowry was the hero of the Canadian Open, drawing everyone's attention to it away from the Live and yes. PGA merger. And now we have uh, a fantastic one of the one of the great tournaments was really deserving of a national open and uh, a, a local winner in, in and some, amazing circumstances. And some proper golf drama that's not the garbage we've been dealt up yeah. for 18 months in Adam Hadwin being smashed while there's a playoff just yeah. going on. Fantastic. Yeah, that's that's golf. Rounding out the so-called expert crew this week is a man I'm going to now refer to as the anti-Logue, mm-hmm. whereas Logue buries into niche topics, Rod Murray looks at the bigger picture. Try to. And perhaps leads his own tipping to be bigger picture about top tens, not winners. Rod, welcome. <laughs> Surface level only is what yeah. I'm hearing. Yeah, you, yeah. yeah. well, it's a, maybe. It's, yeah. About, <laughs> it's about a body of work, isn't it? True. No, it's about yeah, a body of that's work. That's right. This is what the FedEx Cup rewards. It's the body of work that you get rewarded for with your handicap at the end of the year. That's it's true. Stuff. That's Seriously, true. who had on their bingo card Nick Taylor to be the man to kick the live P- piff DP World Tour deal off the back pages of golf mag- uh, off the front pages of golf magazines and websites. Well, I can tell you none of us none because of us. looking back at the tips last week we will push very very quickly through our results which were not worth noting. So in we fa- will- in <laughs> fairness, I picked Corey Connors. Now, if you pick one Canadian, don't you by default pick them all? So technically that's a win. I think you had Brooke Henderson, didn't you, at the shop right in which case you too have had a win. Or are we saying all of Canada are winners? Down, yeah, if, if, okay. you, if you've picked any Canadian, you've picked all Canadians. That's how golf tipping works. Okay, so fair I'm enough. claiming that as a victory. Put that no, in my victory. No, I picked Ayaka. For, uh, that's yeah, right. That's right. Stole your but I was going to go with Ash Buhai. I seriously was. Yeah, I had yeah. it in my notes. Sure, we're all experts yeah, in yeah. the hindsight. That's, that's right. true. Yeah. Yeah. But we do still have 14 wins and 101 top 10s to date. Is that the same as we had last week? Did we have no top 10s? Well, if someone wants to know, they can listen back. 14 wins. And I've I've had seven wins. So let's think that's... That's just about you, dumb. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> You'd have to think. Uh, so pretty much all eyes this week will be on the US Open, of course, that returns to Los Angeles for the first time in 75 years and an all-new venue. Last year, of course, Matt Fitzpatrick claimed his first major at Brookline, also known as the Country Club, where he also won the US Amateur. The Englishman getting it done in extra holes over Will Zalatoris and also gave Billy Foster, his caddy, his first major, which was a very good story. It's still for extraordinary that yeah. Billy Foster has only one major. He's yeah. better known than some tour players, career tour players. Yep. His first major was last year. Yep. Amazing. Well, he did have, in terms of, he worked a lot for Lee Westwood, who's still waiting for his first one. So. He also worked a lot for Seve, though. You would have thought that somewhere in yeah. there he had a Seve. Yeah. Anyway, it just, that was one of the more interesting things, I thought, That's last right. Year. Yeah. So quite a different sort of golf course ahead of us this week than Brookline. Logue, you're going to give us the lowdown on Los Angeles Country Club. Or LACC is. Look, that's what we're going to call it from now on in the podcast. We've got to give it a full name designation, then you go to an abbreviation. Can Excellent. we go LAC? No. No? No. 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 I'm just, I'm just, just no. checking. Yeah. Okay. okay. So it's a fairly big deal bringing the US Open to LACC for a number of reasons. Uh, the city of Los Angeles hasn't had an Open for 75 years. Uh, and West Coast Opens are important, of course, uh, for various reasons. Again, the TV window 
uh, means they can make a lot more money. Out Great of it. for us here in Australia. West Coast Open is the best by far. It helps. It certainly helps. Uh, USGA is, this is a big earner for the USGA, the US Open, and uh, biggest, this, this helps biggest them. earner, wouldn't it? By, oh, would fund the USGA so. yeah. pretty much, lock, stock, and barrel. And uh, having it on the West Coast really helps with that. But also, you know, this is one of the great American cities and uh, mm. the the greatest championship in America should be brought there from time to time. Is it the most American American city, LA, in some ways? Mm. It just it signifies New York. It, it's just everything America. Yeah. Yeah. The sprawl and, and big yeah. and brassy and the houses are just... And LACC very, is very Hollywood. Yeah, too, very much so, yeah. It's it's a, the real Hollywood America. I it's guess, the excess I mean. America, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And it is in many ways the dream site for the USGA. It's the one they've always had their eye on as the site to return to Los Angeles with. Um, and that's because it's one of the rare venues that is has incredible pedigree, but it's also uh, has the room to host a major tournament. Um, the infrastructure around the course, I'm not so sure... Uh, no. How people are going to go sort of getting there and back. But um, as far as a tournament it's venue goes when they're there, Shades of Marion, yeah. Of yeah. Marion, yeah. Um, but much bigger venue than yes. Marion. Uh, well, they've got a whole other course, haven't they? They've got the South course. That's right. Um, it's Yeah, it's a big course. Even the North course itself is big and wide and yeah. spacious and great vistas. And uh, it's, it's quite amazing. Um, the journey to getting this major championship hosted here is is quite extraordinary. Um, it, it was just completely off the table for many years. And uh, that all started to change when the restoration was done. And the, that sort of started up around 2006, 2007. Uh, there was a restoration of the North Course, which is an original uh, George Thomas design. Um, Gil Hance, Jeff Wagner and Jeff Shackelford uh, were responsible, primarily responsible for the restoration. I think it's hard to understate the influence of Shackelford mm. in that, uh, in getting that going. Around about the time Shackelford had written, he was a member at Riviera and had written a book about the history of Riviera, which started to raise the profile of George Thomas. And then he wrote that book, The Captain, about George Thomas, which uh, really, again, raised the profile of George Thomas and helped the LACC members understand what they had uh, of you know that they had something historically significant with their, their George Thomas course and the North course, um, the LACC hadn't always been at that location. I just want to mention up front here: I've got a lot of this information from an excellent video uh, hosted by Michael Wolf. Um, oh, oh, yep. uh, for no laying up, which we'll leave a link to in the show notes. Um, so if you want more detail, better presented than I'm doing it here, then, <laughs> then, uh, then you're I'd nodding off. And you're definitely sure go to that video. Yeah. Um, but he goes into a little bit more detail on some of this. But LACC moved around a few different locations early in its history, um, but eventually settled in its current location around 1911. Uh, they had a makeshift course there for about 10 years, and then they hired Herbert Fowler. And this is a piece of the history which I didn't, I wasn't aware of, that Herbert Fowler was actually responsible for the design in 1921. Mm-hmm. And George Thomas was a member at the golf course and helped in the construction of the course with Fowler. And then it was six or so years later that George Thomas got the uh, the go-ahead to redo the North Course. And so that's when it became a George Thomas design in partnership with Billy Bell, which, with whom he collaborated on, on a lot of golf with, with yeah. a lot of other golf courses, especially in that LA area. Um, underrated area for golf. Not yeah. underrated mm-hmm. area. It's just some amazing golf. But it's in got, that it's got its own unique yeah. style of golf. It's not unlike we've got with the sand belt here, where yep. it's unlike anything else in the world. Heathland around London. Yeah. And you've got this yep. LA sort yep. of pocket of You get golf to hear the word baranka all the time. Yeah, right. <laughs> Who doesn't love to hear about a baranka? <laughs> In many ways, I think it's a style of golf that Sydney should model itself on. Very. Mm. Um, yes, the absolutely. Parkland Sydney. Imagine course. if Thomas had been in Sydney. Yeah. Mm. Anyway. Yeah. Well, let's not I was just that. imagining that. I've yeah. gone into a whole other world there. Yeah. yeah. Um, so obviously one of the storylines this week is that LACCC hasn't hosted a US Open before, but it is has in fact hosted quite a few high-profile tournaments. Um, not for many years, though. Um, it's hosted numerous LA Opens in the pre-World War II years. Okay. Um, it has hosted USGA events before with the US Women's Amateur in 1930 and the USGA Junior Amateur in 1954. Um, but that was it for many, many years until the 2017 Walker Cup. And again, I think it's the restoration that was the catalyst for a lot of this. The members at LACC started to recognise what they had was not just this incredible private 
members course, but they had something that they could showcase to the world. And that 20, the success of that 2017 Walker Cup, I think, gave them the, the final little push they needed to secure that, this that, 2023 US that Open. That Walker Cup was one of the great golf watching experiences. It was. And it with was, not that many people, not many ropes and everything, just walking across a really cool looking golf course yeah. and players playing really cool shots. That was, and great teams, to be fair. I was going to say, <laughs> fairly, fairly. It was, Colin Marikawa was in there. Yep. Yeah. Hasn't there been a, I think this is all part of a broader kind of push and interest amongst golfers to see tournaments like the US Open played on the great courses. We had that whole yeah. 80s and 90s period where really the US Open courses were almost interchangeable. Yeah, They'd absolutely. go to a venue and turn it into the same as it was last year. Yeah. Narrow fairways, thick, rough. We saw a bit of that at 2013, Marion. This one, Chambers Bay, Pinehurst, even Beth Page Black, you start to see this push from both within the USGA and outside, I think, that that what people want to see is golf on these different sort of golfers. This one's going to be fabulous this week. So un US. You can't actually say it's un US open like him. Well, we've seen some pretty wacky. Not yeah, wacky, they've started to go a bit different. Chambers Bay and some of those Aaron sorts of Hills. places where there's width and short grass and those kinds of things. But it's just, it's really going to be really cool to see mm. these guys on a firm and fast LACC. My goodness, it could be. That's fabulous. Right. So, yeah, talking, drilling into the course itself, uh, it is, as we've said, it's a wonderful golden age design and it's on a big dramatic property. Um, I think it'll look – even. it's a it's an interesting location in that I think it's gotten even more spectacular given the cityscape that's risen up yes, around it. Around it. Yeah. And we're going to get some amazing visuals out You've of that. You've got that Oasis style thing where it's yeah. this green thing in the middle and then city skyline shiny, around a it. A shiny skyline yeah. around it as well beautiful. with beautiful – Blue LA mm. um, sky as well. Like one of the, just one throwing of the some smog. It it might, might get a little bit smoggy. Is this one of the causes that Malcolm Glover wants to tax out of existence? I think this was a catalyst for that. It might have been LA season. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so anyway, you you hinted at this rod, but we'll wait and see what the rough looks like. Um, we've seen some little mixed reports coming in from social media, USGA themselves, I think. Oh, well, miss the, miss the mark Terrible. in the greatest way with the rough drop video. What the, the rough people want to see. Yeah. But apparently, despite the blobs, uh, people there are suggesting that's only in very small parts of the golf course. It's it mostly like. firm and fast, really wide and all that. Exactly what we want. Just astonishing, though, that they could think that that's what people want to see. Manicured rough again. Mm. Like, well, they, again, uh, manicured. There are some people who there, do want there to is, see there it. Is no, but definitely. That the USGA thinks that that's something they should be promoting. I think they, they're just getting in early with the ball drop video that eventually comes from someone and goes try, bananas. Try to distract from the sprinklers in the rough video, which may now to emerge at some point yeah. this week. I think if they were dropping a ball in sort of more proper wild rough, like you had at Shinnecock Hills yeah. or something like yeah. that, or then I'm all hills. for it. Like, But just dropping a ball into manicured thick rough, what's the point? They could have pulled that from a couple of years ago. Especially from a governing <laughs> body where... Just use the same video. <laughs> there's so many inputs and everything. It's just not what... A governing body, I think, needs well, to be didn't promoted. Didn't they write a piece last year about why you yes. shouldn't want US Open rough at your golf course? Yes. Like, well, why do we have US Open rough anyway? Oh, <laughs> just know. stop it. It's uh, just uh, astonishing. But, you know, thankfully, uh, we have seen other videos, including from Shackleford, yeah. uh, showing that there is some tight, uh, tightly mown grass around the greens in particular and sort of graduates into um, shorter rough. Uh, which looks quite good. And there's some naturalised areas, I think, around yeah. uh, LACC. And there's an interesting mix, especially in the barrancas. The, the uh, barrancas are all Thank really you. nicely nat- naturalised um, and sandy as well. Like yeah. There's an interesting sort of base to that, uh, to those barranca. Um, the ground cover and everything there looks really interesting. Uh, and an interesting mix of grasses throughout the whole course. It's mostly um, you know, Bermuda on the fairways or cooches, we'd call it, I guess, and uh, fescue in the bunker surrounds. Um, I think they've worked really hard to make the greens all match, like the the yeah. green of the fairway, the green of the greens, and the green of the fescues. You mean the actual colour? The, the colour, colour of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're trying to get it all looking sort of uniform, but um, there is a variety of textures and different performance characteristics of the grass that we'll see in all of those areas. Um, there's The architecture is the star of the show. Some of the more charismatic holes at LACC include the drivable par 4 sixth, which we'll hear a lot about. Um, and the incredibly short par 3 15th, uh, which has an extraordinary green, um, which presents an amazing challenge. And really, uh, it's something you can't imagine, like a, on a unremarkable piece of land, mm. what an incredible template to use for uh, you know a short hole. 
um, it's something we should see more of in golf. And how good to see suburban golf, a, a field of this caliber, play with that's nothing more than for the most of them, some kind of sand wedge, probably. Yeah, mm. and just a little bit. Was that Marion? I think Marion had, had, had one. Hundred and did Mickelson? Maybe he was under hundred yeah. yards. Mickelson yeah. was carrying like tournament. five wedges. And yeah, and couldn't work out which one, one to hit. Yeah, still hit it over the green. Yeah. Um, so I actually personally am more looking forward to some of the really long, challenging par fours, um, the 5th, the 13th, the 14th, a few of the finishing holes. Uh, I, I think they're going to be a very interesting challenge because the ball's going to roll around a little bit. A yeah. lot of the fairways are cantered are very steeply and you've got to hit to precise parts of the fairway. They're wide, but uh, angles are going to matter, and especially if it's firm around the greens. Um, it's going to be fascinating. For the definitive guide... On the hole by hole of the course, I'd suggest subscribing to Jeff Shackelford's Substack, um, where, as he does for most US majors, yep. I think he's done in the past, he does a hole by hole description in his newsletter, uh, which is definitely worth the price of subscribing to the quadrilateral. Um, and uh, also check out the excellent flyovers of the course done by No Laying Up and the Fried Egg. Yes. They were, they're very good. All that golf life. course suggests. While their ball striking for any US Open's important, short game and wedge play is going to be of the highest order this week. It feels like imagination might be really high on yeah, the list. Yeah, ability to hit different shots this around week, there. Yeah, to be, see it, hit it. And shape it both ways. Yeah. Not because of obstacles in the air, but no. because of obstacles on the ground. Yeah. You're going to have to be able to shape. That's you right. You're going to have to shape the ball into probably the a lot, fairways. Probably a lot more of what we thought we were going to get at Oak Hill, we're actually going to get this week. Mm. Yeah. Um, which is very interesting. So... Given all that knowledge on the golf course, I think it's a good time to get a winning tip to start us off with tips. So, Rod, who have you got? Well, don't take my tip. I've got to go all, to go all the way down to the bottom. Uh, for a winner, this really is hard, I think. Usual suspects will be up there, obviously, to your Schefflers and Rams, and you know, you'd expect those guys to be up around there. But I think I like Dustin Johnson. Yeah. This is going to be a real driving course. And it's been between him and McElroy, really, I think, over the last five or six years as to who might be the best driver, who might be that Greg Norman. Yep. McElroy's something special, as is Dustin. Uh, and he's been a bit quiet. LA, it's right up his alley, Dustin Johnson. And look, another live player to win a major. Yeah. Add to the – put pour more fuel on the fire. Yeah, perfect. Of the discussion, especially with the merger coming up or whatever they want to call it these days. So I'm going to go with Dustin Johnson. So – I don't think a lot will pick him, but I think he'll be. Uh, I think he'll be right there at the end. Yeah, nice, Luke. Um, I'm going to pick John Rahm. Good. Okay, it's not uh, careful. That limit it's not taken. Is really, really <laughs> thin where you are, Luke, out there on that limit. No, look. Well, I mean, what what indication has John Rahm given of his form recently? I'm I'm just assuming I'm reading a lot into the lead up to this tournament, but I think he's just have, had a good rest, yeah. and he'd be dis- he'd be stinging a little bit from his performance at the PGA. And uh, again, just he's such a good all round game. I think loves course, the West Coast. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I think this course will suit him. How can it not? Every course kind of suits him. <laughs> Pick yeah. the course that doesn't suit the yeah. way John Rahm plays golf. Good luck. Yeah. John yep. Rahm. I'm going to go join you on that very, very <laughs> outrageous limb of picking outside players to win. And Scotty Scheffler. Yeah. He's on one of the genuine all-time heaters. If it wasn't for a slightly balky putter, mm-hmm. he would have been putting something crazy together. So I've seen some stuff. It looks like he might actually put a different putter in the bag this week, which I really, really like. Just a freshen up, something changing. Speaking uh, from personal experience. Yes, I am me. speaking from personal experience. <laughs> uh, so, And he's actually – ball striking is beyond elite. It's off the chart. But really underrated wedge play and short game. So – Really suits well here and was part of that 2017 Walker Cup here. So let's let's yeah, you're right, pull on something like that. That's good. I like Next that. level. He's in the Peter O'Malley stakes at the moment. That's right. It's crazy good. And so the narrative that's building him, this is the danger for Scheffler, the narrative building is amazing ball striker can't putt, yeah. which is not true. Yeah. Clearly, you can putt. You don't win as many times if that's you can't. That sort can. of thing can get in your head, yeah. though. Yeah, but it does. And I'm, we talked about this on State of the Game last week with Chuck. It was like, and I remember VJ Singh talking about this once. He had that same reputation. Amazing ball striker can't putt. And he said one week he just said to himself, I'm the best putter in the world. Stop mm-hmm. reading his stuff. Convinced himself, and he won that week. And yeah. So, Shefflin, maybe it's more of a head thing. It's, a, it's one of those guys. When you're the best ball striker, you get more birdie putts out of it. You keep hitting closer, it at 15 feet, you're going to feel and like you're, you're going to miss a lot of putts. Footers. And then people are going to say you're a bad putter, <laughs> and you're going right. to put some more pressure on your short putting because you're lagging it up a lot. And so, yeah. Uh, we'll look at a few of the other. 
big names. Feel more open. Sorry, does this one feel more open? Absolutely. Feels because we haven't even mentioned McElroy, who's been in. He's about to get a mention in the right to watch. But (laughs) yeah, I I think it is because number one, we don't know a lot about the golf course, despite knowing a lot about the golf course, because we haven't seen these guys taken on. Uh, The state of everyone's games remains that mystery. With the live guys have had a really light schedule now, suddenly, as opposed to having a heavy schedule pre the other majors. So um, it's. Yeah, and, and Rahm's sort of had a little taper period, understandably. Scheffler continues this crazy run. Rory's dipping in and out of form and playing well, but staying away from it. So, yeah, it's it's hard to say. But of those players to watch Scheffler, as I said, world number one, he's played 13 times this year with a worst finish of a share of 12th. That's decent. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't have liked to have been his cat that week, would you? <laughs> he's tied 12. Uh, so he stands out. Brooks Kepka is another one we haven't even mentioned yet. Mm-hmm. Major championship beast. He's been a runner-up and a winner so far this year in two majors. So, you know, look at that. And you don't even need to bother looking at his form outside the majors because it's not relevant to him or anyone trying to pick him. Uh, and real horse, of course, at LACC. Another one with an underrated short game. Has a lot of imagination, hits a lot of different shots, suits well. Ram again, drifted slightly in form, but I think that's kind of by design. Sets himself up really well with this one and timing and everything like that. So you'd think he'd be there, barring something surprising. Rory will be happily rid of a lot of the distraction that has plagued his 18 months. It's somewhat self-imposed, but a little bit not. But wedge game has been at times abysmal in the last couple of weeks. He's given himself nothing to have no. base any confidence no. on, has he? and this week it's going to be so important. And he's driven the ball quite oh. average at times. So he's got the two things that he kind of needs, uh, the things that are testing. But he was tied ninth in Canada last week. Yeah. Would have put in some work. I'd imagine Michael Bannon might be there this week. Final group the week before. For a guy who's playing ordinary, it's not bad, is it? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Top 10 on the PGA. And too. I'd always maintain with Rory that he has no idea. No, when it's going to come. Yeah, no. he doesn't. He can't turn it on. He can't turn it off. No, he just. Right. He he'll just, just arrive just on the third hole yeah. this week and he'll win by 30. He yeah. might he might hit a shot on Wednesday in practice and go, geez, that was good. That's and it. then it's on. That's so, on. Yeah. Uh, Victor Hovland continues to knock on the door at the major championships. This retooled short game that's much better, really going to be under pressure this week. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think it's a struggle for Victor. Yeah. It, long rough like uh, Oak Hill, he's going to do better out of where he can just kind of chop at it. This is going to be a big ask for him. T25th or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And then Cam Smith is kind of forgotten going into these weeks, but still is probably the best wedge player in world golf and one of the best putters. Drives it further than you think. Really kind of shouldn't be a sleeper, but kind of is a sleeper pick going into this week. Australian-like conditions. Correct. Unpredictable kind of form a little bit this year. Uh, And then you've got the likes of Spieth, Justin Thomas, Dustin Johnson, as you've picked, Rod, will be very interesting around here. While Phil Mickelson once again chases a career Grand Slam at a golf course that, had he got it when it was he was 35 years of age, mm-hmm. might have been his best ever oh, US yeah, Open chance. So yep. California and all that sort of stuff, Phil will be up there cocky and talking a lot this week, but he could play well. Could could give it a bit of a shake, which would be a bit of excitement. So having spoken about the main chances, let's get another tip from you. Let's get an outsider. Funny you should say that. I'm going with Phil. I mean, I don't know whether the Masters runner-up can be an outsider. No, I'll cop it. That's good. <laughs> what a story it would be. Six runner-up finishes, obviously, the US Open, and a couple of those he's just thrown away, particularly the 06 one, which we'll probably come to at some point there. Uh, of course, lends itself to his style of play, particularly at this age. His short game is still uh, – it's not as good as it used to be, but it's off the charts compared to the rest of them. But here's where I think it'll really make his year. This whole thing with Liv, and he's been such an architect of all of that – he feels like he's had a huge victory there. He's been chirping on Twitter. If he could get it done this week, he would get the opportunity to be unbearably <laughs> smug, and nobody in the world does smug like Mickelson. Yeah. yeah. And he would be unbearable. It might actually put him into it. If he did it, it would put him in a pantheon. I mean, he he's never going to have a better record than Tiger. It would put him up there. as <laughs> People would rate him much closer to Tiger. So, look – I would never have given him a chance at the Masters earlier this year, mm-hmm. and it's probably sensible not to give him a chance this week, but hey, who knows? I, I think it would have been sensible not to give him a chance at Kiowa Island when he won. Yeah, yeah that's exactly right. So you sit here and you kind of go, well, that's this is a week that really shaped he Phil, loves, so he'll be fascinating loves to Loves the unexpected, doesn't he? And yeah, being a California native and that sort of stuff. So look, he could miss the cut or win by three, who knows? Yep. Like outsider? Well, like... I, I like that Phil pick because I think this is a course that suits a veteran as well, like a wily, yes. wily sort well, yeah. of veteran. 
And it's everything. It's the imagination. It's the execution. It's the knowing when to attack and knowing when to defend and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Exactly. And I'm putting uh, Ricky Fowler in the veteran yeah, category <laughs> and picking him as my outsider. Youthful Ricky Love Fowler. I, I kind of consider him a veteran. I think he's, yeah, he's approaching yeah, veteran absolutely. status. Yeah, he's sure. approaching veteran status. And he might even stop wearing that orange at some point yeah. and realise he's a grown up. It, but he's got all the shots. He's in yeah. recently good form. Um, and yeah, it just feels like this is the sort of place where um, you could see a miracle. Story. He's California that, cool that would, too, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and it would yeah, be a good story. Of, would be kind of a miracle story just following Ricky Fowler around for four days. You always, oh, you always think of him as a PGA winner, day. He's one of those guys who's going to win a PGA in his career, Fowler. That would be about right. But yeah, bobbing up at the US. Yeah. So yeah, that's, great that's story. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, good. I like it. Nice I'm going to go with Ryan Fox who Wait. continues to just play some good yeah. golf over in the States and Europe when he goes back. Uh, perfect golf course for Ryan Fox. Seriously perfect. Yeah. Can smash it round, but also is a great throttle back guy with two iron and all that sort of stuff. The long par threes that are there and whatever won't trouble him at all and plays his wedges quite well. Putting can be a little bit hot and cold, but feel like when the greens get really fast and, you know, there's a lot of break to them. Being a bad technical putter doesn't necessarily. It evens it out, doesn't it? Yeah. Nobody's going to hole a heap of so I And it would be good to see Foxy go close. So he's my outsider. And finally, before we move on to anywhere else, let's talk about the Australians, where we don't have the best US Open history, let's be honest. But no, only two of them. Rod, you're going to tell us yeah. more about our contingent and history. All right. So seven Australians in the field. Cam Davis, Adam Scott, Jason Day, Cam Smith, Lucas Herbert, Min Wu, and the amateur Carl Phillips. All except on the world top 60, except for Min Wu, who gets in on his race to Dubai rankings, and Phillips, who had to qualify, which he did last week at the Woodmont Country Club, which is in Maryland, over on the East Coast. What's he doing over there when he's a West Coast guy? He lives at Stanford. Don't know. Playing a US Open qualifier? Whatever he did, it was an impressive performance because he won it at uh, 400. He's an impressive young player. We haven't seen a lot of him in Australia. He's been in America for a long time, but uh, very proudly carries the Australian flag and whatnot. He's a a Stanford. uh, He plays at Stanford. Cardinal. You've got to be good to get a start at Stanford. That tells you. He You'll should have uh, Colin Swatton on the bag this week. Will he? Well, Will there he? you go. Yeah. That's okay. that's a huge uh, deal. He should be, being in California, somewhat familiar with the course, I'd yeah. imagine, but I'm only speculating about that. You would assume that the Stanford guys go up and play LACC uh, occasionally. The big thing for him this week will be seeing how his game compares to the very best in the world. I think even he would suggest he's there. <laughs> Yet he's clearly one of those players that's got all the tools. So I can't imagine him contending. But an important week for a young player at an important time in his career. How old is he now? He's going to be 19. Are you going to say he's 21, 22? Yeah. I'm only guessing. Seems like he's been around forever. Well, he has. He's yeah. 13, 14. He's done some amazing things in the game. A little bit quieter in terms of headlines and what in here since he's been in the States. But, mate, you don't go to Stanford – if you're a chop. Mm. He's been based over there as well for a long time. For a long time. Boarding schools over for well, well for and everything like that. But can be quite harsh on himself, Carl, from the tournaments I've covered of him and interviews done with him. But very elite level skills. Just kind of working out how to play the game. And 100% dedicated to golf. This kid 100%. has had nothing in his life but yeah. golf. Uh, Played like a pro from the age of yeah. six or Looked something. Like, like. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, winning or at least contending for the rest of them, not out of the question. LACC probably has that familiar feel you mentioned, Logue, that more sort of Australian feel, same as we see at Riviera every year with the gum trees and that kind of thing. There's something Sydney-ish about it. Yeah. Yep. The style of golf, golf will probably be more familiar to the Australians than – Lots of others in the field. There's a bit of a sand belty thing. There's the width and all of those kind of things. So whether that's worth anything, debatable at this level. Yeah. These guys turn up at a golf course. They seem to work it out. Go through them one by one. Cam Davis, this is his first US Open. I was surprised by that. I assumed yeah. he would have played at least one before. But hmm. This is his first. World ranking's never been as good as you'd think for how good a player he no. is. So he doesn't get in off that. And the US Open field's actually a bit of a mixed bag yeah, as well. Yeah, it can be a bit hard to get into. We talk about him a lot. We say this a lot. His best is easily good enough to contend. Will he have it this mm-hmm. week? Who knows? One thing about Cam Davis is he – the big moment – he's not one who searches the limelight, but the big moment does not bother him. If he manages to get himself somewhere near there at the back nine Sunday, don't necessarily write yeah. him off. He's got that Dustin Johnson surprised. ability just to sort of turn, turn his brain off. It he will surprise. Yeah. He's surprised almost every time he's won a tournament. He's been like, where did he come from? So he'll be interesting. Lucas Top Hobart, Australian this- at the PGA too, by the way. 
Yes, yeah. he was tied fourth. Yeah. Tied fourth. A bit yeah. of a Back course for next really year. suited him. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. That was a, it should have been yeah. called Cam Davis Country Club, shouldn't it? It was yeah. perfect for him. Lucas Herbert, four start at the US Open. Best finish tied 31st at Wingfoot 2020. Missed the cut in 2018 at Shinnecock. Last year at the Country Club. Mixed bag this year for Lucas. Win in Japan in April. Not so good on the PGA Tour. Missed his last two cuts. Tied 40th at the PGA. Anything could happen. Yep. That's a player who's just in flux. He could turn up this week and have all of it, or he could turn up this week and have nothing. Sort of place that'll suit him very, very well, though. You would think so. Um, very creative golfer. That's exactly right, yeah, indeed. So, look, who knows? I'm not making any predictions. him. Jason Day, it's his 11th appearance. He missed 21 in 2022, uh, which would have been really disappointing. His best finish is second and tied second. Congressionally, 2011 behind Rory, 2013 again behind Justin Rose. He's not back to where he was 2015, winning early this year kind of means for him, he's now looking at that next rung again, the mm-hmm. next step up for him, his performance in the majors. This will be an important week. I'm not convinced this golf course or style of no. golf suits his game the best, which is different to saying he can't contend, but it just won't necessarily be the most comfortable for him. It will be interesting to see. Minwoo, T27 last year in his only appearance, which is not too bad for a young bloke on his way up. We keep saying it, but he loves the limelight. Opposite of Cam Davis, the stronger the limelight, almost the better he plays. He just needs to get off to a good start. If he has a good first round, look out for Min Woo. And the golf course will fire his imagination. We know he's got all the shots, and he loves to play all the shots. He loves to show off. This course will give him the chance to do all of that. It's almost the anti-1981 David Graham Merrion, which was narrow, (laughs) rough. It can't miss for it. Opposite of that. So, look. Sky's the limit for Min Woo for his career. We know that. Um, this could be a week where he shines. Adam Scott has not missed a US Open since 2002, hmm. including having to go and qualify in, in a couple 20, of years back. Yeah, 2016, I'm going to say, maybe. Had to go and qualify to get in the field, which he did, and to his credit. So this is his 21st or 22nd US Open. Best finish, unfortunately, tied fourth at Chambers Bay. Mm, he's got to do better. Wow. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. Just play better. Kind of, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Give him the Grayson Murray speech. Yeah. Wow. Mate, sorry, play better. Wow. Uh, <laughs> that is quite surprising, though, Fad. I mean, he's had periods in his career where he's been the best player in the world and very close Absolutely. to the best player in the world and never really come up. Chambers Bay, where he finished tied fourth, you wouldn't say it's similar to this, but it's an aesthetic. It's got, it's got and more And they're firm and fast yeah. and with. There's mm-hmm. some similarities there. So, look. Plays well in LA, too. Yeah. Yeah. He Over does. three rounds at least, or two rounds. No, he's won at Riviera. He won at Riviera. Well. Did he? Okay, he won sorry, it. I'll take he won that. That's his last PJ Tour. I'm a bit That's down, right, 2016. Bit down on Adam. Um, no, more recently than that. thing about Adam is he keeps threatening this year, and I can never get it out of my head, that little the windows closing speech he gave a few years ago. He is so aware that this is just not going to go on forever, and if he wants it, he's got to get it done. I think that drives me. The other thing is he will be, in his own calm way, ropeable about the stupid shots he threw away in the first two rounds of the PGA Absolutely. when he should have been a contender. Absolutely. That was just absurd, and even he won't believe the stupidity of what he did. So, yeah. I mean, as ropeable and as animated as Scott gets, that's how ropeable and animated yeah. he'll be about that. Oh, uh, one thing above all, I'll be fascinated to see what he's wearing. <laughs> I've seen the scripting already this week. Oh, have you? Yep. Really? Yep. Of course I have. I'm very important. Can you yeah. give us... Uh... <laughs> Uh, we'll going we'll on try and find a link yeah, to the show notes it's for okay. you. Yeah. Any, let's hope it doesn't rain because that rain suit he produced. I didn't so mind good. the rain oh, suit. It's just I thought it was not bad. Oh, I know. It was good. Yeah. yeah. I'm, quite a, I'm quite a fan well. of the outfits, to be honest. If he Haters be gone. Well, look out. Yep. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Scott agree. could be there. Cam Smith, he too has a surprisingly poor record at this event. His best finish was tied first, which was his fourth, fourth which was his first start at Chambers Bank. Which kind gave of him a PGA right. Tour. Launched his career. Gave yeah. him a PGA That's Tour. Exactly right. Made eagle on the 18th, didn't he? Sure did. Hit it to about a foot. Three or yeah. four feet. Yeah. 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 Uh, missed three cuts in six starts since then in the US Open. Like you said, hard to gauge form. Uh, best result, wing foot. Tied 38th in 2020, reigning Open champion, former players champion, expectations within and without for a good week. Be surprising if he wasn't somewhere in the mix come Sunday, but yeah, I just don't know about Cam. Not a, a typical US know. Open wouldn't no. fall into Cam and, and you wouldn't think that's necessarily where he's going to play well. I think he needs one where there's a lot more birdies, and we don't know whether there's going no, to be a lot right. more birdies yeah, this week. Well there's a, Aaron Oberholzer interestingly tweeted about there's a lot of half par holes this week, uh-huh. and par kind of means nothing. Well, it always means nothing, really. It's about where you sit against the field, but this week it's really going to mean nothing. And I, I, I often wonder if Cam 
likes to see numbers. Feel himself making birdies. Feel birdies and Going feel forward. a score and look in that. And I, and I wonder if that's, you know, maybe a US Open won't suit yeah. because of that as well as because of the style of golf normally required. Yeah. This week will be a good chance for him to get a US Open that is his style of golf. Momentum player, isn't he? Correct. We saw Absolutely. that at the Open like that final round last yeah. year. He made a couple and then just kept going and going. Yeah, and, going. and that's what he did on Sunday at the PGA too. He finally clicked and then he just goes. I think we're in an inflection point in his career, yeah. which uh, it's hard to know, map exactly where he is in his career arc, but it could be a he could go David Duval wise, like have his major win and then just fade away a little bit, like after this relentless surge that he's had to the top, mm. and then he's won a major now. Mm. Motivations are questionable, we, like possibly, we yeah. possibly. I think he's. I think he's still in his window of his best golf. Oh, no question. Um, uh, but you're right. It is about what he's thinking. It's, it's it about, is about what about he wants to know. And that's, I think, always been a question with Cam, who's yeah. always, I always as a young guy, like you would- the, You fear that he could just turn it off at any point. Yeah. Say, Look, I'm done just, with this. Just lose interest. Yeah. As a young guy, there's a lot of Carl Phillips about, like, golf is all I want to do and what I want to be, and this is it, in a different style of person. But now to a point of having reached that pinnacle and had all the money and all that sort of stuff, how long do you keep mm. having that inspiration to do it? So. He is, though, I think the the key for Cam is that there's a competitive side within him that if you tell him he can't do it or if Absolutely. you look like you're going to beat him, doesn't matter what the tournament, he flies. Absolutely. And that, Absolutely. You I can't, think that's backed up by having put the work in, though. Oh, and very I much wonder, so. I wonder, like... Very much so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hard to say. Well, yeah. Anyway, yeah. But that Australian amateur win that he had, yeah. it should not have been yeah. on the same golf course as the guy that he beat 40 Jeff or 50 Drake. yards behind him. Exactly. You know, five yeah. down at the turn and they shook hands on... 15 in the afternoon. So that yeah. tells you what sort of Cam Smith is. Uh, as you mentioned, interesting history with Australians at US Open. Not been a happy hunting ground. Two winners since 80, uh, 1895. David Graham at Marion 81. Ogilvy, Wingfoot 06. Both courses different to this one. Uh, and courses where you wouldn't necessarily have thought Australians might be comfortable or do so well. Having said that, Graham's game and temperament were perfectly suited to the US Open. That final round in 81 remains one of the great rounds ever played. Absolutely. You'll hear it ad nauseum. 17 fairways and 18 greens. Here Here's what's most interesting. Statistically, it's more likely that a pro will have a hole in one than hit 18 greens in regulation in a round of golf. So to do that in a US Open where the fairways are 20 yards wide and things are running, that is an extraordinary achievement. Of course, the one fairway he missed, he missed by literally a couple of inches. Yes, that's right. So uh, remarkable. I mean, in 2006, pretty different finish, obviously. Remembered as much for Mickelson's meltdown as... Uh, of his own fine play, but we all kind of remember the chip in of Jeff's on seventeen, I guess. Absolutely, on three. But the up and down he made at eighteen might be one of the best in the history of the game. That pitch shot he hit from the front of the the green at eighteenth at winged foot, a hole that several players ahead of him made a real mess of. Follow Montgomery. That pitch, if you get the chance, go back and have a look at it. That is off the charts. How good that shot was in that moment, that and period I, where. At his best, his pitching and Just. chipping action, pitching particularly, was really syrupy. Mm. And you you stand there and you just watch it. And you, you may not technically be as good as some other people, but had this tempo and rhythm and motion that was so good. Embarrassing celebration on 17, I'm going to say. <laughs> well, yeah, that's forgotten at least. But, yeah, no, that pitch shot, I mean, you could probably give him another 50 goes at that now. He's not oh, he, was, he was there two weeks ago hitting that for the 100th anniversary of Wingfoot. And? and he did not hit as good a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Did he hit the green with it? Yeah, I think he hit the, he green, hit the but green, but it was not, it was not <laughs> with, his best. With that pin and where that ball was, the smart play for any professional would have been, okay, 20 feet past the hole will do me, two putts and we'll see what happens. So to hit it to five feet the way he did was just – Yeah, incredible. Really, and it all got lost in that Mickelson nonsense, which is Absolutely. understandable, but my goodness, we uh, we forget. So that's kind of the Australian-US Open issue. You'd have to think it's almost time again. Yeah. Again, isn't it? And who do we I think feel it is? Like, I feel like this each. chance, this year, is probably Australia's best chance. Yeah, I, I 100% agree. There's, for, there's enough of our players that suits very, very well. So There's probably something also about having multiple Australians in the field, just wandering the clubhouse for them yeah. and guys to talk to and things Absolutely. that are uniquely Australian, there's like South every, Africa's draw on that, I England's draw on that. You know, it's, every one of them has a player that kind of gives a spark to them. Minwoo does it for Adam Scott now. They've become very close, kind of a mentor-mentee yeah. relationship. And I think Minwoo excites when they go and play a practice round. His excitement levels rub off on Adam. Um, Cam Smith and Adam have it as well. They're very close mates and they love to go and play golf together. And so there's enough for all of them to have that little bit of a spark this week. So As we saw in Canada, if one of them's got a chance, I think you'll see the other six hanging it. around the 18th yeah. green Absolutely. waiting for it to finish. And there's something to that. So, look, I'm going with Adam Scott. Um, nice. Brave. I've, well, 
I just think he's the motivator. He's <laughs> a brave. He's one of the most consistent golfers on the planet. Exactly. And look, physically, he might not be what he used to be. And all of a there's lots of other players doing amazing things with ball striking. But at the end of the day, it's going to come down to motivation. And for a couple of reasons. One, he's been there so many times. And two, I do think that closing window at some point is going to get him across the line. And if it's going to happen, I think in a US Open, this week will be it. I don't see anything in the horizon yeah. for him, so go at him. Um, I'm going out on a limb as well with Cam Smith uh, for all of the rubbish I just said about his career arc and everything. I think he's still... <laughs> <laughs> That'll all come after this week. Yeah, <laughs> yep. That's fair. Uh, I'm not going to change my tip to match, despite it matching yours. I'm going with Cam Smith as well. Serious. I, I very, I think I very rarely tip him to be a top Australian because I like to find something else about the others. This week, I cannot find it's any reason to pick another Australian over Cam Smith. Yeah. Very, so, very good rationale. Uh, let's move on from the US Open very briefly here. Uh, and the LPJ Tour is in action despite there being a men's major on, which happens every so often. And Rod, you are going to tell us what's happening in, I believe, Michigan. Michigan or Missouri? Missouri. MI. MI. <laughs> Pretty Missouri. sure it's Missouri. Yeah, Missouri. We're in Belmont, Blythe, Missouri. Blythefield Country Club. Yeah, Correct. you're right. This tournament's kind of about the scheduling. Here's the problem. The women's PGA is next week. Correct. And you'd think the LPGA wants to give the players a tournament the week before to warm up. Correct. That's a great theory until you look at the week, the two weeks after the PGA when there are no tournaments and the very next tournament is the US Women's Open Correct. at Pebble Beach. So I don't know what's happened there, but if anybody thinks they can unlock the world of golf tournament scheduling and make it perfect for all tours across the world, give us a call and let us know. Because, uh, <laughs> Feedback good, lines are open. open. <laughs> good luck with that. So, yeah. look, that's a shame in some ways. Even though it's one of the bigger purses on the LPGA, you're going to miss quite a few of the world's top 10 players because lots of players just don't like to play the week before a major. Some do, some don't. Not that it's a poor field. It's a really good field. Uh, you've got Lydia Ko, um yeah, Lydia Coe, Brooke Anderson, Lexi Thompson, no Jin Young, Ko, Lily Avu, or Ty Titikin. So yep. that's what you sort of give up the week for. Jennifer Coe is the defending champ. Uh, Cup Cho is the defending champion, uh, playing well. She will be furious about having lost to Rao Zhang a couple of weeks ago. So I'm yes. tipping her in case you're wondering for okay. my uh, fair enough for my tip this week to go back to back. It's a shame they won't get the press they deserve this week. The LPGA. Just because they're used to that and it happens all the time doesn't make it right, so it's a bit unfair. Probably will be a pretty good tournament. Um, let's see what happens, but yeah. Logue, a tip? I'm taking uh, my lead from you and not changing my tip in response to Rod's tip okay. um, and, yeah, Jennifer Cupcho as well. I, I think, think it's a very, very sound tip. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with Minji Lee because she feels like she has to win sooner rather than later. She's been that close right. and maybe finally leaving New Jersey where she kept getting close and not winning might be the good thing for her and going to, as it appears, Missouri, not Michigan, um, and getting ready for the major run of yeah. – PGA, WPG, KPMG Women's PGA, US Women's Open. She's going to really be firing for that little run. So, big shout out just on the Australians: Minji, Steph Kiriakou, Grace Kim, Hannah Green back from a break in Australia. Obviously, getting ready for the PGA the following week. The US Women's Open, but Suo, fabulous final Unreal round at the shop. Right, uh, gets another start this week. Would be fabulous to see her go on with that job. Yep. She's such a nice girl, and such a good player who just has not produced what she's capable of since she's a professional. I agree with that completely. So rounding out the action for this week is the Women's Amateur Championship, sometimes called the British Amateur incorrectly, asked John Huggan. Uh, But we're at Prince's in England this week. It actually starts today being Tuesday. Bunch of Aussies trying to win there. Caitlin Pearce, Justice Bozio, Abby Teasdale, Leon Higo and Amelia Winnie going up against the likes of world number one Ingrid Lindblad, uh, Ila Gallitz guy who won the Women's Amateur Asia Pacific. Uh, you've got your highest ranked local player being Hannah Darling, who prolific winner in underage championships in the UK. Americans got a few there, being standouts Jensen Castle and Latana Stone, probably. The winner gets into the AIG Women's Open, US Women's Open, Evian Championship, and gets a traditional invite to Augusta National Women's Amateur. So a very big event that unfortunately kind of falls when it falls, but that's just the way the really RNA schedules. Too. Yeah, really good field. Uh, of course, this is one of the traditional stroke play into match play. Uh, the course is a real star. Proper links golf course. Yeah, absolutely. 
Uh, one we don't see much of, of course, because it doesn't have Open Championships or Women's Open Championships there. But we'll get a, gl- a glimpse of it with some of the rising stars of women's golf. RNA have it on their YouTube channel. I was going to say, where can we watch it? Yeah. yeah, so the TV guide for us for this week will be on our website this afternoon. But <laughs> the YouTube channel has the matches towards the end, which I seriously recommend tuning in and watching. Absolutely. Uh, and we're going to go around the circle and pick a winner, and I'm going to lead off with Justice Bozio, who I've covered quite a bit, watched quite a bit, improves at every step of her golf path towards being a professional. Uh, Hasn't been a prolific winner, though, on bigger stages, but consistent performer. And I genuinely think she's around the corner from winning something really big as a surprise to some people, but not to others, and a real kick on there to end an amateur career with some seriously good golf, seriously good player, works really hard again with Richard Woodhouse up in the Gold Coast and just, yeah, really, really good player. Train drama's getting there, though, so learning about the UK's... (laughs) Difficulties of travelling by train very quickly. She's had some really good performances in those TPS events, hasn't she? And they're elevated fields for an amateur yep. who's early in their career. That's and that's impressive stuff. So yeah, good tip. Yeah, Logue. Uh, yeah, I think the women's uh, women's amateurs are a great stage for some of these young players to announce themselves to the world and that's Justice Bozio is an excellent tip for that. Um, I'm going with uh, honorary Australian Janith Wong who Perfect. similarly I think will uh, be announcing herself to the world with this event. Representing Malaysia as always. Played a lot of her golf in Australia obviously and she's she's a killer and, and a good match play player as well. Such uh, a good player. Really um, so, yes, yes. Yeah. such yeah. a good golfer. Yeah. And will eventually become Metropolitan Golf Club's more famous export than Mike Clayton. <laughs> Even if I just have to talk it into existence. <laughs> so I just want to mention the uh, Princes. I'm really looking forward to seeing Princes on TV as well. Yeah. Um, and uh, But this event has been to some amazing golf courses yeah. over the over recent years. When Louise Duncan won a couple of years ago, I was glued to the television just to get a look at Kilmarnock yep. back then. And before then, it was at West Lanx. I'm just looking at the list yeah. here. It was Royal County Down, Hillside, yep. Dundonald, Port Stewart, Royal St. George's. Really you, you just good mentioned Bates. He said more than once, if you really want to play the world's great golf courses, do not turn professional. Yeah, he stays an amateur. The, the amateur events yeah. go to the truly great golf courses of the world. Absolutely. And it's, yeah, so good to see uh, Prince's, you know, top-level golf being played at Prince's. Yeah, indeed. I'm really um, excited. Rod, a tip? I'm going to go with Hannah Darling. She is the, the darling of the local press and whatnot, and she's got to win something big. So she's a prolific winner, as you say, but just doesn't seem to get across the line in the really big events. This would be a really big event. And such a good player, too. I watched her with that, that one you talked about with Louise Duncan won a couple of years ago. Kilmarnock Hannah Darling was there and thereabouts, I think, in that one as well, from memory. And goodness me, what a player. She was, yeah. And then next week, of course, is the Amateur Championship. Uh, which actually goes to Hillside. So another very good watch. Yeah. What a time of year for golf, honestly. Oh, mm-hmm. This is where it really ramps Men's, up. And women's and amateur golf, you've got all of the really good stuff yeah. going exactly on. Exactly right. Place, so. Uh, that's it for our US Open preview of Playing from the Tips, also cool. known as Episode 18. Uh, keep bumper up episode. T- bumper. Mm. Bumper. Yeah, I like yeah. that. That's good. Mm. Keep up to date on all things US Open on our website, golfaustralia.com.au, where the lead up will have Aussie player profiles, TV guides, tee times in Australian Eastern Standard Time, so much more. And then you'll get daily reports, views from people with a, a thought on things, plus all the action from the LPGA Tour and the Women's Amateur. You can also sign up there to get your golf news emailed twice weekly and daily during major championships. And we will be back next week, hopefully celebrating golf and how it's played rather than how it's administered for a change. Mm.